Hello there, welcome to uh, Cinema Lounge, where we sit back, relax, and uh, casually talk about some movie topics once in a while. Um, uh, since we're... Casually. <coughs> casually. Um, casually. <laughs> if, if you guys don't know, this could be a surprise to you guys watching at home, uh, we're going to talk about dinosaur films on the podcast, but for this mini topic, we're going to talk about uh, film sequels with long gaps, like Jurassic World is one of the recent examples and plenty more from this year, uh, where the sequel came out years later after the last sequel. So, Jurassic World came out this year, and Jurassic Park 3 was the last Jurassic Park sequel that came out in 2001. So that was, like, uh, 14 years ago. So it was quite a while since we had a sequel. Uh, there's a whole list on Wikipedia that kind of lists... hold on. No, I'm sorry, sorry Matt, sorry. you look like you're in pain. No, no, I just uh, have something in my hair. I'm sorry. It's just uh, ah. What the? <laughs> it's not better, actually. I think you shook. <laughs> I think you shook inside. I think you shook joy out of your head there. Yeah, it was probably anger. <laughs> Anyways. Be some good written to me. Some good writing material. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's hilarious. But I need to count afterwards, actually. <laughs> yeah, I should have count those and see how many you got in there. Um, as he's doing that, let me uh, continue on. Um, like I said, there's a whole list in Wikipedia which tells uh, the original film and the sequel and how long it has been since the original film. And there was quite a few from this year, like I, like I said, Jurassic World was one of them, and uh, uh, there was Vacation, that was a sequel to uh, Vic Vegas Vacation. Did I've anyone go see that? I actually did see it recently. Oh, I didn't even know that was... Oh. It was okay, at most. Mm. I, was, I was curious, because I haven't... Um... Uh, I I did see Vegas Vacation and that was pretty amusing, but that was that was like, it. I'm just like, okay, finished. Yeah, I I uh, watched it recently and just it's. I honestly haven't seen that one, but after looking at the trailer, it just seems very unappealing. It's it's very, <laughs> it's very raunchy. It's very dirty humor. It's um. It's interesting. Ooh, sign me the link. <laughs> yeah, it is. There's um, it does you know That's traditionally cool. continue from the last movie where they have the son and the daughter of the Griswolds, you know, living as adults. You know, you have um, Audrey who's living uh, somewhere in Texas with her husband, who is Chris Hemsworth. Um, in the film, he plays like this. Uh, weatherman and he uh for the girls out there he shows off his cock a lot so there's a there's he's got like a big he's got like a big schlong in the uh in the film like there's a scene where uh they're they're getting settled in and he walks in like uh welcome to my home uh he's in, the, in his underwear and he just like here's the remote and he's like posing in these little areas where he's, you see the dick in the underwear and i was like Okay, oh. I don't actually see the dick. Do I no. want to see well, this? Well, in the end credits, they show pictures later on, and there's like a family picture of Audrey and uh, Chris Hemsworth's character, and they just cut it off where they don't see the pants, and then all of a sudden they lower it, and they see the pants stick, the penis sticking out of the shorts. I need an adult. It's a very, it's very adult. Like it's. It's, it's like it sounds like. It it's wants a to be like hangover. It's a big departure from the original films to be at least um like um Rusty has t two sons and the big brother's like this wuss pussy kind of character who's passive and his little brother is like oh my god he's got the mouth he swears up a sore and picks on his big brother. <laughs> So. Yeah, I'm really not. I don't. I don't know. I've always had like sort of a thing against like really like you know, cruel kind of dark humor like that. And I've so, I've seen some of the, you know, Christmas vacation. I've seen some of that. Yeah. I'm really not. Yeah. It's just it doesn't really appeal to me that much. Ugh. Yeah. 
not, you know, it's mean. Yeah. I don't like mean yeah. stuff. Yeah, a lot of people don't, yeah, <laughs> it's understandable. But while looking at the trailer for Vacation, which is very confusingly titled, mind you, because by calling it Vacation, you essentially make people think that it's a remake of the original Vacation. Well, here's the thing about that, James. Um... And in the trailer, I'm just looking at it and saying... I'm not done yet. Sorry, okay, Mike. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to... Yeah, James, shut up. I'm kidding. And when, right. and when I'm watching the trailer, I'm, I'm looking at the, the the style of humor that they're going for, and it's it, it's kind of... It, it's it's just so so estranged from it. You know, they, they say... They come out and say that, and, you know, they have a line in the trailer saying, don't worry, this new vacation will be much, much better than the original yeah. vacation. Yeah. Like trying, like, yeah, trying to put in like meta humor. It's like no. Mm -hmm. It was. It was like that one line just popped up. It was like, uh, you want to go to you? You want to do a vacation that you did thirty years ago with your family to Wally World? It's like oh, no, 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 no. It's gonna be something completely different, but nothing like the original. And the son's like, I haven't heard the original. Well, you don't have to. This is gonna be something completely new. Like, get it? Cause it's self referential thing. <laughs> it's like um, they 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 do go to Wally World like in the first film, you know, and they uh, but they do like other shenanigans on the side. It's not like the same route as the first one. Lame. Not a fan of those movies. Yeah, not I don't trust are. Vacation One, like that new Vacation One bit. There's, they do have. Yeah, it was just, it was my, it was meh at most. It's not like worth your wild. It it, it sounds like there's no point of watching it. Just stick with the originals. Yeah, stick with the originals mostly. If you this like is the water, originals. by the way. That's good to know. We don't want to promote the underage drinking on this show. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> trying to. Da, 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 da. It. It's water. Um, another example of something that came out this year was the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water. Yes, actually. that was that was ten years since. Uh... Actually, that's a very interesting case when it comes to uh, Sponge Out of Water because, technically, like it's not necessarily movies themselves because SpongeBob. Like it, it's still a long-running TV show, mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. with this one. Like, I guess the thing with Sponge Out of Water is mostly to make the comeback of the creator, Steven Hellenberg. And for someone, like, I, I'm a fan of old Spongebob. I kind of gave up somewhere around season five, I believe. And then oh, when, everybody did. <laughs> yeah. But then this movie came back, and it, it pretty much, it's like, it's really new. And it captures the same feeling of, old Spon of uh, the old Spongebob. It was legitimately a really good movie. Uh, but I will say that, like, maybe there are a few quirks. I'm not going to say that it's amazing, but no. But, like, for, for something, for a, another Spongebob movie, it's definitely legit. And, like, I, I guess, like, what really makes it unique is that, it, yeah, okay, I think I pretty much said what I need, what I think has to be said. It's mostly, it's to mark the comeback of the creator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um... Yeah. When I first saw the trailers and stuff on Tumblr, people were kind of freaking out a little bit, saying it looked kind of stupid, but one person came along and said, okay guys, calm down. The 3D animation, you know, the hybrid, actually looks really good. And then oh, yeah. people kind that's of calmed another... down a bit. Oh you yeah, know? that's another thing. It, it kind of did like Wreck-It Ralph, where despite the movie being good, the advertising is completely false. Because... The majority of the time, they only show, like, I think through 80% of the time, they only show the 3D parts, when in reality, it's, mo like, most of it, most of the, th like, the computer animation thing is, like, maybe 20 minutes of the movie. The oh, rest yeah, is actually 2D. And it warms my heart a bit to see 2D animation back in theater, so hopefully we can see more of that in the future. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hopefully with a better movie attached to it. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, the last legitimate one, I think it was just, like, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because 3D animation, I'm <clears throat> even I'm getting sick of it. Like, it can be beautiful, of course it can, but, you know, yeah, I, don't, I think it was just... you, Matt, said something, like, compared to, like, the fumes of 3D animation, it's a breath of fresh air from the original. I Probably. think that was you. That was you. Maybe. That's gotta be you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I don't remember saying that. Nah, it may have been Doug Walker. I don't know. Someone did. I don't know. It was a while ago. <laughs> or maybe, like, was it about, if it's about the Iron Giant back in theaters, then it could have been me. No. Yeah, no? maybe. A breath of fresh air from the fumes of 3D animation. Yeah, because for me, that was my pause for, like, that moment when I could have 2D animation in theaters. Sure, it's a 1999 movie, but still, it's the freaking Iron Giant. It's just, it's, it's no. a freaking classic. You know, I was never alive when 2D animation was popular in theaters. <laughs> was I? I was no. born during that time. Yeah, lucky I you. Born in it, molded by it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have my first CGI film until until the year 2000. <laughs> um, that was. Your parents should have raised you in a cave with uh, with nothing but. Uh, <laughs> Old school Disney movies playing. They actually the... did. That's they what. Did. That's what they did. That's what, that's they, what they did. did. That's yeah. yeah. I, think that's, that's okay. what, I think that's what every parent does. I think. Favorite films growing up: The Rescuers, Down Under. I'm not kidding. That and that's actually a good point, Mia, because that's also a sequel that's been released years after yes. the original. That's... Yeah. Now, The Rescuers. That's another weird one because that was during that was back during the period when. Disney was trying to recuperate from themselves. It was the 80s, and they were at their lowest point, and they were trying to find ideas. Um, there was a re-release of The Rescuers that really ended up being popular, and they decided, you know what? Let's make a follow-up to The Rescuers. It, it wasn't ended up being way better. <laughs> and it, was, it wasn't until mid, mid-production they realized that when they re-released The Rescuers again, it really wasn't as popular, and they were like, uh oh, yeah, screw it. You know what? Like we're in the middle of production, might as well do it anyways. Like honestly, if it were done somewhere before, it would have really hurt Disney. But it's mostly thanks to uh, the Little Mermaid that they kept on going. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Disney is a big example of those Disney sequels released years later. Like this list on Wikipedia does show direct DVD sequels, like. If you're counting directed DVD sequels, the longest gap between two films of sequels is uh, Bambi and Bambi Two. Mm. Uh, Which, as I've gone on the record saying, I I prefer Bambi Two over the original, but really, they're kind of, they're kind of like uh, they're uh, they're they're kind of like conjointed twins. You know, you can't have one without the other, and it's well, it's a midquel. It's not really a sequel. I I'm barely not... even knew there was a Bambi 2. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm pretty conflicted between both of them. Because, like, like the, the anime... Because I'm not going to deny that Bambi... The first Bambi is an amazing movie, considering the animation and stuff. But in terms of story, it's Bambi 2 that's got it a bit more. Like, that one yeah. has more... Uh, that has more of a remnants of a plot. That ha- has actual story... Than just seeing cute animals being cute animals. Well, the strength with the original was that they was that they were just they were just sorry, uh, Mia. Were you about to say something? No, I was just saying, Thumper. Like Thumper's my spirit animal. <laughs> You're afraid. You cannot jump. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Go yeah. on, James. With uh, with the original, they were they were still you know they were they were still mastering all of their techniques. You know they said um, let's uh, let let's uh, bring a let's bring a mother a pregnant mother deer into the studio to to see if we can study that and see and see if we can capture it uh, and it, get, what? Uh, it gives uh, it gives birth. Oh yes. yeah, I just yeah. read. I just read that. I legit just read that. Oh, you've uh, been reading no, my book I sent you. They were waiting for days and days, and unfortunately, they missed it. And mm-hmm. I think it was just 
think like two hours later, the baby fawn was already uh, up on his legs and walking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's those quadrupeds, man. They they have such an advantage. But um. But yeah, with the second one, they they're less showing. They're less about showing nature how it is, and more, a little bit more about humanizing the characters, which is the, which is the difference. Right. I think. Well, I, no, the difference is mostly. Because the first Bambi is about the life of Bambi, seeing him from birth to manhood, basically. Bambi 2, it has more of a story where uh, the great prince has to teach Bambi like how to be a prince, mostly to grow up and stuff like that. And, um, and we mostly see their relationship. That and also... Um, there are some, there are some things like it really has some something really going. Like for one, um, the main sport playing the great prince, and also the animation. Like okay, it may not be masterful like the first one, but it's still, you know, for for a directed DVD for a directed DVD sequel, that's actually really impressive. And most of the things is given to Andreas Deja. Uh, one of the more well-known animators at Disney, like he's pretty much he, he's pretty much more uh, like he he's pretty much more he has a niche for animals and stuff like that. So he was mostly in charge of directing the animation in there. Mm -hmm. And that's why it looks awesome, I think. Oh, I, yeah. I personally yep. thought the. I personally prefer the style of animation in, in Bambi 2 over the original. Even though, yeah, that puts me in a really small minority. But I, I don't hey. know, there's something about... Uh, there's something... There was something a little bit uh, cleaner and more fluent about the about the movements in, in the second film. Well, I mean, we're talking about old school versus new school. I mean... Mm -hmm. Bambi 1 is the old style techniques where everything had to be done on paper and cells. Then ba and with Bambi 2 we got the new age technology with computers and softwares, you know. I thought it was still hand drawn, but they just scanned it in. Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe mm -hmm. it is hand drawn, but yeah, you know what I mean. Like the presentation is a lot more different. Yeah, they probably have digital cleanups there too. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, what other? But eight? the, but the second uh, longest gap, not including. Oh wait, the first. No, blah, blah. the longest. The that, uh, yeah, the thank you. One that doesn't include direct to DVD sequels. So much family interaction. I was not expecting family. Oh no. I have to do uh, that in post. Yes, uh, not including DVD. Direct to DVD sequels, Fantasia to Fantasia 2000 is the longest gap. Yeah. Now, this one has a very unique story. Considering that Fantasia is a movie unlike any other, um, Fantasia 2000 was, an, was another attempt to try to revive what they tried to do with the first Fantasia. Because this wasn't the first time that they tried this out. In, in the 70s, they wanted to do another Fantasia called Musicana. And, um, of course, this doesn't count, like, the package films uh, during World War II and stuff like that. But, um, like, they wanted to do another one. And this one, definitely not as, um, doesn't have that much of art of an artistry in as much as the original. But it still, like, it still does try to prove its, prove its point. Like, the biggest issue with it is that they try to make, like... The biggest issue with Fantasia 2000 is that they try to make more cartoons than actual art. Like, uh, like a good example, Donald Duck as Noah, yeah. or um, or the one with the flamingos. Like those yeah, are basically that. Good. They're, they're good. Like they're good on their own merit, but they're not really Fantasia. And um, also another thing I want to mention is that there's the grand majority of them are story oriented. Like, they all have a narrative structure. 
there's not I don't think there's a single one that show like I think the exception are the whales and the finale with the firebird and the sprite um where like we don't we don't see one that just shows the life of these characters you know like something like dance of the hour or uh, or uh, the the pastoral symphony where we just see them you know this is what they do in their daily lives in in an extraordinary way or something like that we just you know it has to have like a beginning a middle and end oh my god oh my god you? you know excuse me uh you also have all those guest stars remember oh, you yeah. felt like you were in a betting game <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah there's also the spe- i was about to say <laughs> special guest stars what because, is this like, the oscars <laughs> yeah exactly it felt like an award show or something. They were but... spru- sprinkling it with all the guest stars to make it pop or something. It's like, you know, like, it would have been fine if they just kept Steve Martin. But no, they got to add so many other people. It's like, what are you doing here? Yeah, uh, gotta... when I saw, um, when I we first gotta... saw Dan, oh, go man. We got to put Penn and Teller to work somehow. Yeah. That's true. They yeah. can't stay in Vegas forever. When I saw Fantasia, I didn't want it to end. When I said they were doing the last one, I got really disappointed because I was just getting so immersed in the art and the music. And it was like, you know, I kind of have a soft spot for classical music, considering I used to play the clarinet. But it's funny to it mention, just... like... Uh, sorry, but it's just funny to mention how you just don't want it to end, yet it's it's like Disney's longest movie. It's like more than two hours long. Oh no, that's not enough for me. It was that good. It was that good. Yeah, true. And, oh my god, I just I just appreciated it so much. Like, it felt short, even though it was the, one of the longest ones. That's how good it was to me. <laughs> um, Sharing it with you, Matt, it's gotta be one of my favorite my favorite animated film. One mm. of my favorite animated films of all time. I, I do, ha- do have yet to see 2000, which I, I really should get around to doing that. Um, even though it uh, does, obviously doesn't lose up to the original, but I just want to see more cool art and more cool segments, you know? Mm. Yeah. Gotta go see more cool, you know? Yeah. Cool. I want my art. Game with you. <laughs> So, yeah, there's plenty of other films that have the hugest gaps between each other, but there's upcoming sequels that do the same thing. So, mm-hmm. of course, we get the Star Wars sequel coming out this <gasps> December. That's been, yeah. It's been 10 years since the the last sequel. Um, mm-hmm. They announced Independence Day 2 Resurgence, uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon 2, The Incredibles 2, Zoolander 2, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2, Bad Boys 3, Finding Dory, Barbershop 3, and Tremors 5. And Ghostbusters. Um, How would you have a big fat oh. break? Ghostbusters is not a sequel, per se. It's like a re- remake. Boot. Still, it's, it's like... It's not a sequel, st- per it's still se. Like a long, it's still like right. a big gap that's like a follow-up. True. It's, it's like Jurassic True. World. Yeah. Well, Jurassic World's more like a sequel. more than It's a, definitely a sequel. I was seeing how they, uh, you know, when they were in... Like, I was just like, ooh, when I went to the old park. Mm-hmm. It's, cool. I would I like, still yeah. say more a spiritual successful thing. Well, spiritual yeah. successful. about that. Yeah, true. Um, I mean, where are not, the main, where's Jeff Goldblum? Yeah. Not many of those movies you listed are huge gaps. Like, I feel uh, like some of those were. T- let's see. 10, 19, 15, 14, 14, 13, 13, 13, 12, 12, 11. Yeah, they're like... That much. Just a decade old. Just a decade old. That well, too much. Like the thing is, is that reviving a franchise often it is considered very controversial. Um, when you get something like Star Wars per se, like it is, like under the circumstances, it does make sense. It is Disney's new toys, so they really want to try that out. Mm-hmm. But then, That's a good way to put it. <laughs> so, uh, but then, like. The downside of it could be that it it would be looked upon as trying to cash in on an old franchise, you know, like 
they're dead like they're pretty much running out of ideas and they're just recycling old material like that's some of the arguments that i've heard from again ghostbusters that it's just like sony doesn't know what else like they really needed a franchise so they're going back to revive ghostbusters and that's a good point and why so would you <laughs> what and another and another side note you know why would you make a big fat Greek wedding too? I guess <laughs> that it was, doesn't make sense. I, I guess it was that popular enough. It was a cult following. I guess that people wanted it. I don't know. That, that was the. It, it was like the, the only moment that Nia Vardalos vaguely had a career going for her. Because because they had a TV that, series for a short amount of time, and I guess that, sort of like, warranted a sequel I somehow. Who's gonna and, have another big fat Greek wedding? Like I've was, never even seen it, but the sound of it, it sounds so weird. It's it wasn't just, even. It's just a standard romantic comedy. There's yeah. No. It's yeah. It's a sequel, so it's like the next generation. So the daughter's gonna have the big fat Greek wedding now. The big fat Greek wedding. You know, I, they, I actually because they're imagine, Greek. I can think of the reason why they wanted to make a, a sequel to My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Is so that they can sell more Windex. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and the only sells. thing to get out of the original. Windex, it cleans everything. So, yeah, I mean, Hollywood's pushing out these sequels, and I mean, they're bringing back the nostalgia of the original, like, oh, let's just make a sequel to it and just have a go with it. So, I mean, it sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't, so... That's the thing. It's that we're. It's mostly how we live. In an, it's like we're living in a new age of Hollywood right now, where the the biggest thing is that nobody wants to make a movie. Everybody wants to make a franchise, and that's what they're aiming for. And that and like reviving old franchises is the easy way route, so that they like at least they have something. At least they know there's going to be an audience for it. That's why they're immediately going with that. Like, when you really do think about it, there are, like, nowadays, we do have an abundance of, see, of like, follow-ups and stuff like that. I even saw, there was a Twitter on one point, someone pointed out that I think the top 25 highest-grossing films of this, out of, like, the 25 highest-grossing films of this year, only two of them are, are original ideas, San Andreas and Inside Out. The rest are all... Are, are yeah. all Remakes, sequels, oh. prequels, yeah. follow-ups, then whatever. I don't know. I, is, uh, of, uh, I don't know. Talk. Huh? James. Um, I I don't I don't know if uh, San Andreas uh, would really qualify as original. I mean, it's, it's well, a, I mean, it's not based on. It's something. it's not that's it's not yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It's not like it's not like a sequel, a prequel, or a reboot of something. It's just it's a somewhat a original idea that's pushed down to a movie. That and Inside Out, Osmosis Jones. Oh, come on. Osmosis Jones? We're not, <laughs> we're not getting into Although that. Inside Out was better. It was much better. I remember it's, that. It's funny, before we, uh, before we do the podcast, I just want to mention that two years ago, on our second episode, we talked about upcoming Pixar projects. So this was before Inside Out and The Good Dinosaur came out, and we were trying to make our like our predictions on it, and it was just in- interesting to listen back on it. I was listening back on it, and at the time, it was Inside Out was called The Inside Out, and we didn't know jack shit about it. I besides, think it like, I think it was called like the movie, the, the 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 Pixar movie that goes inside your mind. I think something like that. I just I just in your mind. I just called it The Inside Out, and it was I, the, the the brief description was. Uh, emotion inside of a girl's head, some kind guys, of thing. Guys, guys, what if feelings <sighs> has feelings? Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> we just, we just like, <laughs> just like we couldn't think of a, a opinion on that yet. We don't know anything about it. And then a, the good dinosaur we brought up, which was originally supposed to be released. In 2014, apparently, because I yes. when, when I was looking Actually, at it. Actually, Mike, I have a question. That podcast that we have done two years ago, do you know the month that it was done? Uh, 
that's a good question. I think I think I uploaded in the same month too. Actually, let's see here. I think it was, if I'm not correct. Give me a second here, cause yeah, cause I was looking at I think Wikipedia at their upcoming uh, movies. So I was like, okay, let's talk about this and this. So let's see, Samurai. Uh, this is important. I want to know what 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 month. Shh. Okay. Uh, it was February. February? Yeah. Okay. That is actually very interesting then. Because here's the thing. February 2013, right? Yep. Okay, that's actually very intriguing because back then, we didn't really know much. That was when production was going smoothly. It mm -hmm. wasn't until a few months later, which I guess I'll, I'll bring it back again for the podcast. You will, you will. Is that production really went really screwed up when the original director, Bob Peterson, pretty much got booted out from the project. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's not nice. Why would you do that to someone? It will. It was just yeah. Because if you if you really want to check that episode out, it's really interesting to listen back at what we thought about it. Because it was just like, cause, cause before, cause the good dance was supposed to come out before the Inside Out, and you're you're like, <laughs> Matt's like, uh, this film could be a big changer for Pixar. It could be a help Pixar in a good way. And then all of a sudden, Inside Out came out, and it's like, boom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I actually said that? Yes, if you listen to it. <laughs> wow. Um, no, but yeah, that's kind of the irony of all it, of um, all this. But actually, um, the, re the, the reason for Inside, for uh, The Good Dinosaur, is actually, be like, funny enough, it was supposed to be out in 2014, but because of the complications, it had to be delayed for 2015. This is the reason why... Um, this year we actually got two Pixar films. Yeah, so mm. just just something for you guys if you want to throw back to the second episode of second episode part two of what oh my god, so long ago. I feel so old. Two years is a long time. Almost two three. years? Yeah, two oh years my ago. God. It was two years ago. It was second episode part two. You said February twenty thirteen. It's closer yep. to three years. Oh. Yes. It will be next year, yep. Oh my god, that's like way back when I had my portal obsession. <laughs> Yep, so, because I was like, oh, the good dinosaur, crap, we talked about that. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. now we're talking now about I... it. I'll be right back. Now that I mentioned Portal, I have to get my Wheatley plush. Yeah, I honestly don't listen to the old podcast. I think I could cue that up, actually, just for listening sake. Just, oh, uh... God. <laughs> just the throwback. The memories. Yeah, the memories. Hold on, give me a second. I'm like, trying to queue it up here. Uh, if the internet here is gonna fuck with me or not. Well, it hasn't been so far. Hello. I have my headphones unplugged, so you might hear a slight echo. What's up, What's Robo Flash? His name is oh, Wheatley. Wheatley. From Portal. Wait, wait, wait. Is there oh an my echo? god. Way back wait, then, I was, I was so obsessed, obsessed with Portal. Portal. It was it crazy. Was crazy. <laughs> like, like, Wheatley was like, was like ultimate, ultimate robot, robot boyfriend. boyfriend. That's, that's, the that's the best way I can way describe it. it. I was like, was, like obsessed, obsessed with Wheatley. Aww, Aww. how charming. He's, He's so, so cute. cute. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Since, 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 since we're kind of we're rambling, rambling at this point, point um, yeah, yeah, Inside, Inside Out wouldn't be the, the, the only the time, time that the uh, director got picked up off of the project. Actually, I was going to bring up the case of Bolt. When, uh, when that was originally in production, uh, that was being directed by Chris Sanders. Uh, right after being, uh, right after his uh, hit with Lilo and Stitch, but they uh, they booted him. It was going to be called American Dog. Yes. And they had an they had an animation test on it and everything. And this uh, you have this very Stitch looking dog with a uh, with a, a, a yes. superhero. And then you've got like this cat with, with like an eye patch. Mm-hmm. I recall. Yeah. Yes. 
Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I wouldn't have done that if I knew we were still recording. Like, for some reason, I thought we had stopped. I don't know why. By the way, James, did you... I, I just wanted to correct you beforehand. You said, like, like, well, Inside Out wasn't the only one that the director got kicked out. No, that was Good Dinosaur, dude. Oh, Good Dinosaur. Yes. That's what it was. It was it's always been Pete, dude. <laughs> Pete Doctor was always there. Right. Okay, good. Good to know. Good to know. Well, he's uh, he's one of their best and brightest, and uh, I I think we're gonna arm wrestle this year over who gets to buy who inside out for Christmas. So <laughs> we got the good dinosaur coming out next year. So uh... the good dinosaur. Yeah. Um... Well, let's see. Is it, uh, it? I. I honestly don't. Uh, don't have an opinion on on it uh, quite yet. What's the? I was just gonna read what me, what about the film's plot is pretty much. Uh, it kind of says they are kind of cartoony, but they are dinosaurs. They are not walking around with clothes on or anything like that. They kind, they still are kind of dinosaurs. We focus on mostly plant eaters, not oh, the carnivores. Their society becomes more agile. Of a, agile, say agile, fucker. Agile society, more like farmers. They become farmers, and it's a funny story about how a certain way of life that a certain that a young dinosaur has oh trouble God, fitting, so stupid. and he ends up going on this quest. He kind of messes up, and he has put everything right by going on this quest, and that quest meets this, our character, that is an outcast from his society, too. So the two of them from, form this bond, and it becomes this unique kind of story. Isn't it also, like, the world is revolved around, like, what if dinosaurs are still, uh, they they didn't extinct like they're, they're living alongside oh, humans as well. <laughs> they didn't extinct. I, I, you, you don't horrible. know for sure. It could be. My goodness, you were so young last year. It's the only animated dinosaur film we've ever seen, plus uh, Ice Age so far. Probably. I don't know. Like if <laughs> if done right, what am I talking about? honestly, if oh. done right, because I, I think isn't it Pete Doctor that's in charge of this? Uh, I, but, uh, I don't know. Yo, Paul! Yeah, no. <laughs> no? I wasn't... No, it's directed by Bob, Bob Peterson, co-directed by Peterson. I was reading really something, oh, right? Peterson. Shut up. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. Well, um, you know, honestly, if done right, this might actually save Pixar. This might bring them back to how they were. Like, honestly, this... Like, just How, with dinosaurs, like, you were Pixar close. working with dinosaurs, if done correctly, case, this might be <laughs> what could save them. Because this sounds like I don't know, uh, a new direction fun. to Pixar. And whenever they would go on a new direction, it, it's, like, they always go on new directions. And this is the new direction they might need to save themselves. You know? So, mm -hmm. this might, it could be what would save them. If not, well, then, uh, well, we got, we still have Disney. Well, and then you gotta hope for the next one coming out. Uh, that's God. the. And then I go into the Inside Out, which. Man, I really put my money on the good dinosaur back then. <laughs> that was, I was like, yeah, I was like thinking about that. I was like, damn, we talked about like you were like predicting like it's gonna be the big, big thing for Pixar. Well, I oh, said, I'm yeah. sorry, I, 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 I cut out. I don't know if you saw that or not. I it's was okay. like half right. Okay. I was half right. Just take everything I said and just implement that on Inside Out. And like I said, Inside Out wasn't like a elaborated thing back then. It was like a very hush hush thing until. Yeah, it was very hush hush until like I think one of the D twenty three.